the Bible says, Oh, my people, hear my teaching. Listen to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter hidden things, things from of old, what we have heard and known, what our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from their children. We will tell the next generation the praise, praise word, Praise were the deeds of the Lord, his power and the wonders he has done. He decreed statutes for Jacob and established the law in Israel, which he commanded our forefathers to teach their children so that the next generation will know them, even the children yet to be born, and they will in turn will tell their children they will they will put their trust in god and will not forget his deeds but will keep his commands they will not be like their forefathers a stubborn and rebellious generation whose hearts were not loyal to god whose spirits were not faithful to him May God bless his word. Amen. Yeah. I stand before you today not because I'm an authority uh, when it comes to uh, this topic. I know we have uh, a great men and women uh, sitting under my voice, and I pray that the Lord will enable me to handle this topic to my best. And I pray that all of us will be blessed. Even as I speak about it, I'm also uh, uh, learning. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah, we have a, a picture before us on our screen. I know there is a lot if you look at it. And critically, you will come up with your own lessons. But that is an example of two people. One is handing to another the baton. And as you can see, there is a gap in between the two people. One is running very fast ahead, and the other one who is coming with the baton is also trying to catch up, but they are yet to catch up, and there is a gap in between them. That is just an example of uh, handing over the baton. It is like a relay race, and that is what we want uh, to learn about today. In my introduction, I've talked about um, uh, what we do as a church. One of our main pillars in Sitam Church is children ministry. Children ministry is a main pillar to us in Sitam. In this pillar, our main objective is to raise a God-fearing generation of children and preteens who know and can explain confidently their faith in Jesus Christ. We believe that children can be born again. In Sitam, we believe that children can be born again, grow spiritually, and in turn serve in the church and reach out to the lost and reach out to the lost therefore we have programs designed to equip and facilitate this process um, you may be knowing uh, our programs if you are our member or you have come here consistently but for the sake of our visitors we have programs for children in our church uh, one of it you have just seen, they are going to their class to be taught the word of God. And that we do every Sunday, apart from the uh, family service. 
then we have a program called DVBS. DVBS means Daily Vocational Bible School, where our children come and we invite children, even from other churches in schools, and they come and stay with us for one week. And we evangelize them and teach them the word of God. Another program we have, we have the children's choir. You normally see them coming here to sing. That is a program that is geared towards impacting our children spiritually. You normally also see us um, allowing them just to lead us um, in service on, um, in, on Easter, just uh, li uh, the singing to us Easter songs, doing the drama or the skit, and um, just uh, preaching. Sometimes we give them the pulpit and they preach. And I tell you, children uh, are there. They will overtake us if we are not careful. Because we have taught them they are able to preach. They can do all the things we do in church here. So we should not undermine them as a church. Our children are the church of today and the church of tomorrow. In the Easter and Christmas Cantanta programs, we teach them the foundations of our faith. When they come, they sing about it, they act about it, they preach about it, they are founded in faith. They grow up knowing that uh, Jesus died for our sins. They grow up knowing that Jesus Christ came from heaven to earth and he died for our sins. They grow up knowing that he was born of a virgin woman that was empowered by the power of the Holy Spirit. So those are the programs we have uh, in Sitam as a whole. Uh, we really value children ministry. Children are important to us as a church because children are important to God. When children were coming to Jesus Christ, the disciples were hindering them. And Jesus said, let the little children come to me. Do not hinder them. And children came to Jesus and Jesus blessed them. So children are at the heart of God. God loves children very much. And that is what our passage is all about this morning. These opening verses of Psalm 78 stress the importance of passing our faith to our children, of telling the next generation about the Lord. That is what I'm just about or I'm talking about today. Our children are one of our most precious resources that we have around. They are the church of today and the church of tomorrow. That is why sometimes you see us giving them the platform that they, they lead the worship. Um, I know many of, of us could be uh, maybe thinking that we normally do that because we want the children to entertain us. No. We are very, very intentional when you see our children standing here and presenting things. We are laying a very strong Christian foundation in their lives that in turn, these children will be able to share their faith with other children and also with other uh, people who are not born again. And therefore, the nature of our children must be one of our greatest priorities. The nurture of our children must be one of our greatest priority as a church uh, here. It is important that we teach our children when they are still young. I quote one of our missionaries when I was in Bible. Um, who said, it is easier to build than to repair. 
He said it is easier to build than to repair. And all along, since when I left Bible school up to now, I still ponder over that statement. And I realize that it is a statement that has a lot of weight. One time we wanted to build a structure and we were thinking the older structure we had uh, was better for us, will be cheaper for us to repair than to put up a new one. So when we uh, contacted a contractor, they came and they did for us uh, the calculations. And we came to realize that it was more expensive to repair than to build. So it is easier to build than to repair. What this statement means in this sense is that it is easier to build uh, the character, the values of our children than to repair people who are already grown up. It is very easy. It will be very easy for us to train our children here in Sunday school, to teach them the word of God, to lay that foundation that to go and bring people or people who have already gone astray and we begin to lay that foundation. It takes the grace of God for them even to get what you are telling them. Francis Saveria said, give me a child for the first seven years and you may do what you like with him afterwards. The formative years of a child's life are critically important for their spiritual development. And that and that spiritual development and that spiritual development takes place largely in homes, in uh, churches, and in schools. When we are at our homes, we lay the foundation uh, for our children. They could be our bi biological children or the children we have um, adopted or children, yeah, children we have adopted. When it comes to church, we are now extending an, an hand to the children who are in church, children of other people. And when we go to school, we're now going to evangelize. It is a great commission that God has given to us that we may go and preach the gospel to the nations, baptizing all who believe in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All that responsibility God has given to us as a church. If we are not doing it at home and we are not doing it at church and in school, where will our children learn about God? That is a question we need to ask ourselves. All of us who are here today, we need to ask that question. If we are sitting here, we don't teach our children at home. We don't teach them in church and we don't teach them in school. Where will they learn the word of God from? It is a responsibility that God has given to us. When it comes to church here, we find ourselves lacking even Sunday school teachers. And yet we are here. Do we know that career dreams that our children have? Most of our children, if you just go uh, ask them, I wish they were here. What, what do you want to be when you grow up? They'll tell you, I want to be a pilot. I want to be a doctor. I want to be a lawyer. I want to be, they rarely say pastor. They rarely say, <laughs> <laughs> they will tell you all the big professions on earth. That is what they want to be. And yet those of us with those professions, we are here in the church seated. We keep calling for Sunday school teachers. You are here seated. Who will model our children in those professions? 
Our children need us to go and teach them. You are a lawyer, know that children want to be like you. You can go to Sunday school and model our children, teach them how a Christian lawyer ought to be. You are here, you are a doctor, know that even your own child that you have taken to Sunday school, they are telling us they want to be a, a doctor. We need lawyers, we need doctors, we need pilots. Mm. We need politicians to go and teach our children. Don't just sit there and say that, ah, there is somebody who said, Missy na Nema, Yawa Toto. It is not about having Nema. It is a command from the Lord that we teach children. Akuna mwenye akona Nema, Yawa Toto, kufundisha. It is a command from the Lord, and we all need to be ready to teach our children. Another thing, a uh, challenge we face is that in our Sunday school, we have um, uh, the greatest percentage, the highest percentage of our teachers are women. So the children, again, they lack fathers to be a role model to them. If your child will, go, will grow up, then they, they start putting on earrings, know that they learned from their Sunday school teachers who are female. So the male, the fathers, we need to rise up and go to Sunday school and model a father, a Christian father to our children. Children need, need to know that uh, even men, they, teach, they can teach children. Like our small little boys who are there, they have never seen a man teaching them. They grow up knowing that teaching children is the responsibility of women, which is not true. And I know that is um, much of our culture has taught us that. But when we come in the church, we are the people to demystify what culture has put us in and has bound us. And we are not able to do what God has called us to do. So we need to teach our children in, in the church here, and we need to teach our children in schools. We need to go out in schools. Each one of us, you have a responsibility. The baton, you saw somebody running with. All of us, we have that baton. If you are born again, you have the baton in your hands. If you never knew about that, know it from today, that you are having a baton that you need to hand over to someone else. And how you hand over matters a lot. We have this uh, window called the 414 window. The 414 window. Uh, please don't go in, in hardwares and ask for the 414 window. It is not a window that we, a physical window. It is a space that we can take advantage of. And this space is between age four and 14. This is a space where our children are in their uh, formative years and uh, studies are proven that uh, in this window, uh, you can lay a very strong uh, Christian foundation for your child or for a child of someone else. You can lay a very strong Christian foundation. You can lay values that you want, uh, good values that you want, in the children you are ministering to. This age, this is the age when most people are most likely to accept Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. And those of us who have taught children, maybe if you, if there is something wrong with you, but if you are a teacher who will go to teach, children very well. Let us begin from age five and below. You go tell them, present Jesus Christ to them as a hero. After you finish the lesson, you ask them who want to be born again. 
all of them, their hands will be up. They want to be born again. And even age seven, up to age 14, all these children, when you, you preach to them very well and ask them to respond to what you are telling them, they will lift their hands up. I teach PPI, and I normally do it in our schools here in Sitam, and I teach a, a standard eight. That class is having about 20, 22 children. And by now, 18 of them have already given their lives to Jesus Christ. And I praise the Lord. I was wondering if I would not have given of myself to come very early and teach these children, where, who will teach them? Who will teach them? It all takes a sacrifice from us for you just to wake up very early in the morning and go to teach a child. Imagine driving your car, you come from here and you go to um, Keep Karen is the nearest primary school to us here. And we are always calling upon teachers. Teachers are not there. You drive your car, you go there, and you preach to a child, and they give their lives to Jesus Christ. After 10 years, you meet them. Maybe that child you taught will be the governor now of the county. What will happen when they see you? I think before they speak, they will make you to stand so that they can honor you because you reached out to them. Children are the leaders of tomorrow. I was imagining, um, I was imagining um, if, uh, that our president, our former president for the United States, uh, Barack Obama. I was imagining uh, this Barack Obama being in a class where you are a Sunday school teacher and you lay that foundation of Christianity. You lay those good values in him. How will the world be? Let us not undermine children. And I know many people, they undermine children. And even some of us, we fail to understand. Sometimes when we tell you, last year, remember, we had um, a talent show for our children. And our small girls went and put on very well. They put on uh, very nice dresses. They were coming to compete. And they were, uh, they were marching here very nicely, very nicely. And they come and they do like this. And they look at people. So I was asking some of them, where is your parent? Where is mommy? They say mommy dropped me, said they will come to pick me later. This is the time you are supposed to come and aff affirm your child. Tell them you are doing good. Some of us, we've never gone to Sunday school classes to know what our children can do. Some of our children are being called, and yet we, we are not there, we do not know what is happening in the lives of our children. And we can't give them the right direction because we don't know. We are out of their lives. And this is the 414 window. Kindly parents, let us take advantage of this window. These children can be in our homes, our own children or grandchildren. And these children are in the church here. You can come and teach them. They are also in the school. They are in our estates. You can do Bible club. I think I talk a lot about PPI and Bible club, and I'm sure most of you could be uh, trying to think of a name. Because whenever I come, I, should, I, I have to talk about that. Bible clubs are very, very important. Friends of your children, will come in your home. What will you do? What are you doing with those children when they come in, uh, in your house? You, you can have a Bible club for these children. 
have a Bible club. One of us was sending me a clip where the, 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 their child had brought in their friends and they were singing praise and worship. They were dancing to the Lord and they were reading the word together. Let us minister to friends of our children in our uh, estates or apartments where we, we stay. I have a, a Bible club. Immediately when I came here, I found children. And these children got attracted to me in the apartment where I stay. So I gathered them and I asked their parents if I could minister to them. And the parents had no problem. So I started a Bible club like that. And what I realized, these children, their parents are not born again. Their parents don't have time with them. Children don't go to church on Sunday. They are about 22. Some of them, we have uh, two who are two families uh, who had children who are Muslims. We have others that they, 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 they go to their parents, go to SDA, of which sometimes they don't even go. And I minister to children. And right now, all of them are born again. And I do it every Saturday. And there was a time, if you want to know that children hunger for righteousness and they thirst, there was a time I was so busy here and I could come in late, go early, and they were coming at my door. Pastor, are we having Bible club? Are we having Bible club? Because sometimes I give them juice. So I said, what will I tell them? Then I said, let me tell them I don't have juice. So I told them, I don't have juice. I made that mistake. They told me, Pastor, we don't want juice. We want you to teach us. We don't want juice. We, we, shall eat at our, we, will eat at our, we shall eat at our home. So children are thirsting and hungering for righteousness. And there are some toddlers there. You take a picture and you tell them this is Jesus Christ. They want you to tell them more about that Jesus Christ. And this is the time we can introduce this Jesus to these children as a hero. So it is our responsibility to reach out to these children. Statistics in Kenya. Kenya's Child Kenya's child population is estimated to be about 53%. And um, that is about 19 million out of the 34 million with an annual growth rate of 2.2%. When you come back at home in the evening, I know some of you have these children, you will know what I'm talking about. The first thing they will ask you, they are not interested about any other thing. They'll tell you, give me the phone. They want the phone. This is what we call Gen Z, Generation Z. And I know uh, at some point in the, at the beginning of this year, we requested the women to uh, buy for us screens, and you did it. God bless you very much. Because without those screens, it is difficult to teach these children who are used to a screens at home, they are used to the phones of their parents, and they learn through these uh, gadgets. So thank you so much, women, for the screens that you bought for our children. May God bless you very much. I know this one will take us a long way as a church to minister to your children. So the population, as our Reverend uh, Kiprop was telling us, is that it is Learning, that is the word he used. You go in our schools, we have thousands of people. Watoto ni wengi sana. Go to high schools, go to primary. We were having um, a training here, and we called other churches, and we were training them about PPI. And there is a church who came only two people, and they had adopted a church to be doing PPI there, and they were telling us, at the school they were going to do PPI in has 2,600 2, children, and they are only two. So the population is 
has ballooned. We have many, many children in our primary schools, many children in our secondary schools. And those in primary, they are this that we are calling the 414. They are in that space. And we can take advantage of uh, this window by going to teach PPI in our schools. I know sometimes we normally ask for permission to go and do other things out of our job. This can be a very uh, precious reason for you to ask your employer to give you only 35 minutes and you go reach out uh, to these children with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. This Psalm, Psalm 78, was written by a man named Asap. Asap was both a prophet, uh, you can see that in First Chronicles chapter 25, verse 2, and a poet. He was one of King David's three chief musicians. The book of First Chronicles tells us he, he played the symbols and has one of the Levites, and as one of the Levites, he helped lead music before the ark in Jerusalem. Asap is the one who wrote this book. When Asap says, listen to my, listen to the words of my mouth, it literally says, incline your ears, stretch your ears to the words of my mouth. Asap is talking about an active, eager, and responsive listening, which results in learning and obedience. He wants his listeners to put forth some effort. Don't just sit there. Stretch out your ears towards me and catch every word. This Asap is a man who lives in the time of King David, and is a man who had the whole history of the generations that were in Israel. And he is coming and calling attention uh, to the children of Israel, and also to us who are living today. And he's calling upon us to listen to the words of wisdom that he wants to tell us. The history of Israel set forth as a parable. What is Asaph's, Asaph's parable? He sets forth the history of Israel as a parable, as, as a story with a lesson to be learned. Verse 1 to 8. The verses we are, lo we are looking at today are only the introduction to the psalm. The Sorry. The rest of the psalm recounts the history of Israel from their going out of Egypt to their entering of the promised land to the reign of King David. It is a psalm of instruction, demonstrating Israel's circle of unbelief. Verse 34 to 38 provide a good summary of, of this. Asaph says that this extended parable or story teacher, teaches us a lesson from of old. In other words, the application is timeless. What he says in Psalm 78 applies to the generations before him, and it still applies to us. So what exactly is the lesson he wants us to learn? The lesson is this we must pass the torch on to the next generation. That is the whole lesson Asaf is writing, has written in this Psalm of 78. We must pass our, pass our faith on to our children. We must pass our faith on to our children. It is like passing the baton in a relay race. You saw that picture? It's a lot harder, it looks. But as parents and believers, we have a responsibility to pass the baton to the next generation. In Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 6, I'll read that one. 
Deuteronomy chapter 6, it is a command. The Bible says from verse 4 to 9, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commands that I give you today are to, to be upon, upon your hearts. Embrace them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols of you, on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. This is the command that God gave to the children of Israel. They had just come out of slavery in Egypt and he was giving them this command that he is also giving us today. Parenting is not an easy work. It is not easy. It is as hard as Deuteronomy uh, chapter 6 from verse 4 to 9. The way we are supposed to teach our children when they sit down, when they lie, when they wake up, when they are walking on the road, uh, we need to print these words on our doorposts, on our gates, so that our children, what they are only seeing are instructions of the Lord. And that means we need to give time to our children. I know some of us, we are into many things. We are building on our careers. We are in business. We are doing so many things. But I want to tell you, parenting is the core responsibility that God has given you as a father and as a mother. We need to set aside time to our children. Um, Reverend Chan said one time that values are caught. They are not taught. There was a time uh, some, then, uh, some people, uh, brethren, came. I think it, they were two sisters. They were telling me, Pastor, when you are in front, they are preaching. Don't think that everyone is listening to you. People are busy Googling. They are busy on Facebook and Twitter, and they are doing their own things behind there. One day, just walk and see what people are doing. Then I told them I'll not walk. God will just whip them. They are in the house of the Lord. Sometimes we normally have family services here. We are with our children. The reason why we do family services with our children, it is not because we want to punish you as a parent. No. This is the time your child needs to see you raising hands and worshiping God. They need to see you clapping, dancing for the Lord. They need to see you kneeling down and just calling upon the name of the Lord. They need to see you praying. It is no time for you to come and Google in the church. Kwani ni lazima uje ufanye Google kwa church. So you just sit outside there, outside the gate, you do your Googles and you just enjoy yourself. You can go on Facebook in your house, isn't it? It is not a mass you come to church, then you begin going to Facebook. You know what you are doing? You have come to do disaster in the church. Because your children are watching what you are doing. In fact, sometimes I, I normally hear some screams, watoto wanalia uko nyuma. And I'm just guessing, wanakuanga wanasema, nipe timu, nipe timu. Eh? When you don't give them, munaanza compete inside the church. So, let us teach our children, let us model this Christ to our children. Let us make him to be a hero to our children. Don't come in church people worshiping and you are on your phone, especially family service parent. If you are not destroying your own children, you are destroying children of other people because they are watching you. May God help us. So parenting is a responsibility God has given to us. In, in the four by 
a hundred relay, it is not only about how well you run your portion of the race. It is also about successfully handing over the baton to the next runner. If you drop the baton during the handover, it doesn't matter how well you ran your race. It is simply, it's simply if you drop, it is simple if you drop the baton, you are disqualified. If you drop the baton, you are disqualified. Know that whenever we come in the gates of the church and we go out, there is a baton. We are handing over to the next generation and we must do it successfully. We must hand it over to the next generation successfully. Verse 3 and 4 go together like this. What we have heard and known, our fathers have told us, we will not hide these things from their children. Psalm 78, 3 to 4. Asap wants us to learn the vital importance of passing along our spiritual heritage to our children. Asaf says, we heard these things from our fathers. The reason we know them is that they passed them along to us. Now we must not hide them from their children. God is a generational God. That is why uh, many times we see in the Bible, he's being referred to as the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. God is a generational God. When we are handing over this baton to our children, we are saying they in turn will be able to hand over this baton to their children and Christianity will continue. What do you want to see at 10 years from now? What do you want to see? If we will not train our children, whom will you find here? We will come here and find the church empty. So if you want to enjoy coming for fellowship and worship, worshiping this church, God, then we need to hand over the baton successfully to our children. That is why you see us incorporating them even in worship, praise and worship. Sometimes they will do ushering so that they may get to know these things. That uh, when my parent is no longer there, I'm the one who, who will be there. And when you come on your Bakora, you are entering the church, say 30 years from now, you will still find powerful worship in the church and you will enjoy staying in the church. Otherwise, if we do not hand over the baton successfully, the church will not be there in 30 years or 20 years to come. Where will we be today if over the centuries the remnant of Jewish, Jewish spiritual leaders had not preserved the scriptures for us? It is possible we are fully it's it's possible we are fully armed for the task, but too often, like the men of Ephraim in verse 9, we turn back on the day of battle. Some of us are turning back. We get distracted from our task. There is battle going on in the spiritual lives of the children. With the advancement in technology, children are learning many things. Oh, everything is now uh, in our phones, on our televisions, and those are the teachers of our children. Apart from that, they also have their peers. Let us not turn our backs on them. Let us devote ourselves to teaching them the works and the works of God. The works and the word of God. Let us tell the next generation the praise, praiseworthy deeds of the Lord. Let us tell them the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord. I know some people are asking, even if, Pastor, even if we said we go and teach PPI and even in our estates, will we be enough? I want to tell you that it is better to do something, however much little, than not to do anything. 
I like the, um, uh, the, 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 the parable of um, uh, the late Wangari, Wangari Madai, Margaret, about the harming bird. I know some of you might have heard about it. He talked about a forest that was on fire and um, the animals, the big five, ran away and they, they were just on the side looking, the forest burning, and they, they, they were doing nothing about it. All the animals were out. And there is this little bird called the hummingbird. This hummingbird started running with its small uh, wings and going to the river, bringing droplets of water and putting on that forest to cool it down. And the other big animals were discouraging her and telling her, what are you doing? You think you can manage this? You are so insufficient. You are too small. Your wings are too small. Then the little hummingbird said, it is better I do something than not doing something. It is better we be doing something than just watching from the sides and Ted saying how our children are, are spoiled, how our children are doing this and that, how our children are bad. This generation is spoiled. You don't even want to interact with them. You don't want to relate with them. Let us be like the little humming bad. It is better to do something that, than to remain silent without doing anything. Let me close with this. One of the saddest verses in Psalm 78 is verse 9. The men of Ephraim, though armed with bows, turned back on the day of battle. Will not it be great if each generation improved over the previous one? If each new generation loved God more, followed God more, Praise God more. It will be a wonderful thing for us to do. Our next president is among the children we are seeing today. Our next governors are among the children we are seeing today. Our next women reps are among the children we are seeing today. Our next bishops. Our next pastors are among these children. When we look at them, let us see great destinies behind them. Let us see leaders, people who are supposed to transform their generation. And if we look at them like that, with the eye of the future, we will be able to, do, to take the necessary steps even to impact these children. I know most of us complain about our politicians. They are corrupt. They are doing this and this. They are doing this and this. We cannot rectify our politicians today. Let us build leaders, godly leaders, for the next generation. For it is easier to build than to repair. There is a picture there that I want us finally to look at, media. Are you seeing that picture? It's not the same like the one we saw. The one we saw, there was a gap in between the people who were running. But this one, there is no gap. They are all running and the baton is being held from behind. That is the, the ideal position we are supposed to be in as parents, as a church, as believers. We need to be handing over. We are running. We are going. But there is 